What's up, my man? Rebuild Warriors. My name is David, and today we're bringing you week two of the Commanders rebuild, part of an eight-team rebuild. It's the 2025 season. We're coming off a disappointing loss where we only put up 11 points against the Giants, a division opponent. The Eagles are already 2-0, and we need to keep up with them at the very least, but we also have the Cowboys in this division that are always tough. Great playbook. Still have a high overall. And we're taking on the Packers, who put up 31 points last week, defeating the Lions. So the Packers were not featured in um, a video last week because they played another CPU team. So we're just going to go over real quick who they have on their roster, and then we'll get right into the game. Of course, they have Jordan Love, Josh Jacobs, Marshawn Lloyd, great little backup here, Jaden Reed. Dubs, Watson, Wicks, Bo Melton, Malik Heath. They just have depth at their wide receiver position. They keep trading for Isaiah Likely, which is really stupid. I can't stop it. They did it last year. I put him back. And then they trade him for him again. Luke Musgrave. Uh, their offensive line's okay. Of course, they're missing one of their uh, best left tackles ever in Bakhtiari. Uh, they draft in a nice little Lyman here, Dom Altman at center. They have Jordan Morgan and Zach Tom. So they have a decent enough O-line. Kenny Clark, Jack Sawyer, Tyleek Williams, Rashawn Gary. They run a 3-4. Edwin Cooper, Quay Walker, Jay Alexander, Kalen King, Eric Stokes. Xavier McKinney, Javon Bullard. So they have a pretty decent team. It's going to be a tough matchup here for our Washington Commanders, but they need to get a bounce back in a big way. So let's get right into it. It's week two of the NFL, and this one features Josh Jacobs. It was a nice performance in his last outing. Almost 170 yards on the ground. It's the Packers and the Commanders next on Madden Football. This building holds just north of 80,000, and they have come out in very good numbers today at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. Today, after a topsy-turvy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here, as it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Washington Commanders. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about this commander's team coming into play here today. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Packers, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. The first game's out of the way. Time to buckle down for the long season ahead, and we're off in week two. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. Six foot four inch Jordan Love taking the field for the first time. The 2020 first round pick from Utah State set to lead Green Bay. And at the start of Jordan Love's NFL career, he had one of the best seats in the stadium watching Aaron Rodgers work. But now he's looking for more than that. Rocket arm, big play potential. And he wants to show this organization that he's capable of being a dependable starter for the foreseeable future. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Throwing. Love. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Now Love. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, 
An empty possession, not what they were seeking. Fielded just inside the 20. It'll be a 47-yard punt with a net of 40 following a 7-yard return. And the Commanders will take over with a 1st and 10. So out comes the Washington offense as they get their first shot. And they will be let out by their second-year quarterback. And the guys on the other side of the ball know they'll have to be on their toes. And it's obviously not just the passing, but the running element that makes him dangerous. He ran for over 100 yards in that game last week. So keeping him contained will be a big emphasis for this defense. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. The numbers for him from a week ago. 17 carries, 61 yards, and a touchdown. There were some signs of life from their ground game last week, but overall, just a so-so performance. Everyone knows they can make a slight improvement how they contribute to this aspect of the offense. Lyman can set their blocks and hold them a little bit longer, and he can be quicker to the hole and hit a lane. If they do that, they should get some better numbers produced this week. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup at 9. Well, this defense for the Packers, terrific last week in the season opening victory. And as in any game, takeaways are always a big key. They're always discussed on defense. There's an emphasis there. And they came away with three interceptions in that game. Seven yards there at a first down. You were telling me this yesterday. That's exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game. It's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. It's a first down Washington on a pickup of 18. So after several rushes to start the game, Charles, they go to the air there and get a nice completion. Nice mix-up on the play calling, right? Establish the running game, make the defense think you're going to do it again, and then hit them over the top. Now you've got them betwixt and between. They don't know which way you're going to come at them. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. Here's a quick throw out left. That's caught. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Hands it off out of the gun. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. They're able to convert with a gain of four. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up. Looking for McCarron, and he's got him. Touchdown, Washington. A great play there. His first touchdown of the new season. And the Commanders get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Good throw there, and I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but he looks a lot more comfortable in his second season. You can tell he put the work in in the offseason, and what I mean by that is understanding the playbook. Not just the plays and how to execute them, but how to do it against a variety of defenses. Also understands his team better, what they can and cannot do. You can see the confidence rising in him as he plays. New York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. It's a foot race. And they are not going to catch him. He's in. Touchdown. That was a special return, and it happened because he's a special returner. He has to have that approval from his special teams coach's head coach to bring it out of the end zone. But let's be honest, a lot of times where they bring it out of the end zone like he did there, they don't have approval. I mean, I think a lot of times they do, but correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes it's just a guy getting a feel, right? You're yeah, exactly right. What's the old adage? Sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules, and if you do, you're taking out some responsibility, but he was happy to do so there. Extra point put through by Boswell, and we are tied at seven. 
And what a job there by all 11 on the kick return. The blocking excellent. The return excellent. The result, six points. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I will continue that. And now a fumble. The ball's out. Wow. That ball is not free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. He'll look to throw. Steps away. So no sack, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll still bring up a fourth down. But one of the things we talked about coming into this was we we're never going to question the fight that he's going to have for all four quarters of a game. But ideally, you want him fighting for big plays and first downs early, not fighting just to get back to the line of scrimmage, as we saw right there. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Yeah, last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. Here's Watson. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good, three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> to throw now. Here's Love. All the commanders are going to get there as he's taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Here is third and quite a ways. Love looking to throw it. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Jacobs. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here's Daniel Whelan now. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. And he's going to use his legs here. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Here comes third down at seven. Now back to throw. Steps away to his left. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs.
And they run the option here on first and 10. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now from our nation's capital, and it's Washington in possession of the football as they've got it second down and 11. And now time will be called here as Washington has an injured player down on the field. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. And this offense on third down today, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. They'll set up a throw. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. And based on my math... They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Just a gain of a couple there, and that's going to bring up second down. Love now. Got his man. That's Luke Musgrave. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. Love now to pass on first down. He gets that one complete to Ricks. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And a short gain here down to the 22. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Here's Love. He's got the hookup with Dobbs. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And now that sets up third and two. To pass. Here's Jordan Love. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Packers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and ten from the ten. Love. Staying on his but he can't get away forever, and down he goes. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. So a great play there for this highly regarded linebacker making his first career sack. And his versatility on display right there. Look, we've known him primarily as a tackler and a cover man, but he can go get the quarterback when the situation calls for it, as he just did right there. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Back to throw. Love. He finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Looking to throw. Love. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give him credit. They 
took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I may be an analyst, but I'm also a fan. I love it when people take the big shots downfield, but he was under a lot of duress. And I think that forced the incompletion downfield. Didn't have a real good chance to find his target. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end, complete. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And there wasn't much of a window there, Charles. Had to deal with a couple of defenders, but able to find his big tight end. And, partner, we know double coverage is a challenge for any player to try to defeat. But maybe it's a little easier if you're one of those big tight ends because you have a size advantage on just about anyone trying to cover you, and you use your body to create some space. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. 38-yard line, second and nine. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. They'll see about converting this third and eight. Looking to throw. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw Maybe the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Now this offense hoping to avoid the 0-2 start. Now they trail, but they've got a first and 10 here. Oh, well, he's got a man wide open, complete. And the commanders are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. He'll keep it himself, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. York able to send this one through, and that will not us up at 10. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens, because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. 
And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Jordan Love ready on first down here. Got Dobbs over the middle. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Operating from the gun. Love. Throw caught by Musgrave. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. It's so important to tackle well against these guys. But you and I both know that's easier said than done when the guy you're trying to tackle looks like this guy. And it's usually going to take more than one man to get him down, and it did right there. First down, love to pass. That's complete to Dobbs. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. He finds his man complete. That's Jenkins. Oh, he faked it with a joke. Now he's got some room. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. And that goes for a gain of 31. That's why you call a screen. You want to catch a defense over committing. Plenty of space available, and that matched up perfectly. What a convoy he got downfield to pick up big yardage on that play. They will throw again here with Jordan Love. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Romeo Dobbs as the first half is winding down. And the Packers have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. The touchdown all set up by the big play one snap before, but they finish it off here with a shorter completion, this time for the score. I like how they stuck with what got them there, right? The big pass play, got the momentum going, right? That's You create it with a play like that, and you come right back with another pass play to finalize things off. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes it a 17-10 score. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So we've come to halftime here with the visiting Packers out on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. And the half will begin with a touchback. The Washington offense ready to go to begin the third quarter. But Charles, we saw pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Dotson in motion right. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run right up the middle here. And this is going to be a commander's first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Ball on the 39. Here's second down at seven. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. 
Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Green Bay about set for another series. Here comes Romeo Dobbs. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away? Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. Every team has plays in their book to try and buy some room when a safety's on the table. But a big variable is how does each team deal with the pressure of executing in those situations? In this case, they didn't, and they gave up two points. Now the free kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here. The commander's offense set to take over. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. They're going to look to throw. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game and there he picks up another first down whatever they saw going into this one they've been able to capitalize on it and no adjustment has been made to take it away now here's a handoff out of the gun now he's tackled a yard short of the marker good gain of nine on first down from the 41, this is second and a yard. Off the option, he'll try and run with it. And he's taken down inside the 30. And that will go for 13 yards on the keeper. And a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Now we get a stoppage because, as you can see, a member of the commander is in some obvious discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Now a first carry here for Robinson. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play, as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed unable to find an open hole to complete that pass so add three uh, all told after the safety it's a five-point swing and that could have turned out much worse well you don't want to say no harm no foul but i do believe you're right a nine-point swing hurts five points much more manageable especially in a tight game like this and this will not be returned it'll come out to the 25 and green bay getting ready to go as they take the field and remember they had the safety go against him on their last possession that was followed by the field goal a moment ago so they've taken a couple of hits recently but still lead it here 
as they start first and ten. And a quick throw here that's complete. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Play action this time with Love. A short throw to Musgrave. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. On play action. Love to throw. That is incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. But again, it's Love. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 44-yard line. To give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can't go to try to go with a quicker guy and sometimes you even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down Holding. second Off and man. right at a yard. So that flag obviously takes away the good yardage that they had on the play. And talk about a momentum shift because we can visibly see this celebration shifting from one side of the field to the other as soon as everyone saw the flag. Now left side on the swing pass. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. Going back to Love. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. To throw now, here's Love. And that will be incomplete as well. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to kick it away. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. And the Washington offense going back to work. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Making that play on the pass rush, that's Devontae Wyatt. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to it. Like the footwork back there, I thought he did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Trying to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end... Oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, it winds up getting buried for the loss. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at FedEx Field. Ready, right. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this swim lead. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Now 
Now a second down throw for Love here. A short throw to Musgrave. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that'll bring us to a third and four. Now Love. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Jacob's going to try the middle. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. This offense so far on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and eight. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Benjamin St. Juice. And the Commanders are right back in this football game. A seismic shift in momentum here in the fourth quarter. That's the break that the defense needed. And you know as well as I do, people are going to question the play call in that situation. Sometimes you have to question the execution, not necessarily the call. And in this case, those defenders found a way to give their team a chance. So out comes Washington's offense to take over. A golden opportunity for them now following the interception. They need to try to at least get three. Obviously, a touchdown puts them in a much more secure position. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. They work now on second and nine. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And this one too low. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. They'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have the commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And it's complete. Touchdown, Washington. A big play there. 44 yards. And the Commanders have taken a fourth quarter lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. York now for the extra point. And the lead is up to five. So that drive spanned five plays. And it was polished off by a Washington touchdown. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. He finds his man complete. That's Reed. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards for number 11. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's a handoff to Jenkins running left. There he goes left side. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. 
So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Love. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. And the pressure gets to Love, and he'll go down. That sack courtesy of the effort of Hassan Reddick. They've got up over 30 yards of touch so far, but a sack knocks him backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. Here now a third and 20. Here's Love. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 23. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. Love now to pass on first down. Being chased out left. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Throwing. Love. The swing that out wide to Jacobs. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Here's second and two now from the three. They'll send a tight end in motion right. Off the play fake, Love. Jaden Reed, his second touchdown on the season. And the Packers answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here. And they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. So here we go. The Packers will line up to go for two. Love throwing for it. And he's going to go down. Can't get rid of it. So a sack on a two-point try. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, when you to love go that for chart. one. I do <laughs> love it. It helps you with your decision-making during heated times. And just look at it right here at this part, point of the game. Go for two. Try to make it a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. They'll set up a throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Well, this feels like a late season game, even though it's just week two. Here's a big third down. Looking for McClellan, and he's got him. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. So it's Commander's football as we get back to it. Here it is, fourth and inches. They'll run for it with Robinson. And this is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Packers are going to get the football back in excellent field position. Partner, when you see a running play stop short like that, you just know that the defensive front, they won the battle of leverage and created the push 
back into the opposing backfield. And for the offensive coordinator, whether you had one yard to go or 20 yards to go on fourth down, now you're probably saying, oh, maybe I should have passed it, right? Yeah, hindsight is always 20-20. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, Arnold? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Boswell's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. Simply stated, I think you have to look at that as a missed opportunity. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now Washington. Down by four, just over a minute, 40 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Back to throw. He's got McClellan, and he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. He's back to throw. Pass complete to Robinson. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Here's a second and seven. Back to throw. Dotson, he's got it. Short game, short game, last two plays. Who do you think's excited about that? Absolutely, this defense. They're saying go right ahead with those. Wide open receiver complete. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and 10. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now. Because I think they're going to try and get several plays up in quick succession if they can. Now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout. As they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. They'll come up first and 10 here. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. This one came right down to the wire, and CD they had that one final chance to try to navigate their way into the end zone, but couldn't get it done to avoid the loss. Yeah, and how about the defense there? Because while they had one final look at the end zone, the defense made sure they knew what they were doing on the last play, executed it flawlessly, and no flags. Because remember, if there's a defensive penalty, there's one play left in the game that the offense gets. They didn't allow that to happen. So for the Packers, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Washington, they'll drop to 0-2. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.